Hello, everyone, and welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan. I'm happy to be here with you on this very chilly Missouri day. It seems like the entire country is frozen right now. If you're somewhere warm, please just keep it to yourselves, okay? No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm glad you're somewhere warm because it is. I'm tired of being cold. But anyway, I am joined by Liz behind Hello. the camera. She's here to help answer any of your questions you have along the way. And I'm super, super excited because today we have a special guest joining us remotely, Blair Stalker. Hi, Blair. Hi, Misty. <laughs> I'm so excited that we figured out a way to make this work and for you to be able to join us in spite of all the challenges that we have going on right now. It's so crazy, but it's so great to talk to you. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we absolutely did. So it's, this is Blair. She is from Wisecraft Handmade, and she is amazing. She's a great educator. And tell us a little bit more about yourself, Blair. So right now, uh, we just relocated to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and we're getting dumped with snow right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't seem right, does yeah. it? <laughs> it's not warm here, but um, anyway, it's, it's nice to look at. But um, I'm originally from North Carolina. We just moved to Santa Fe from um, Seattle, and we um, have two kids. We have family here in Santa Fe, so we're here for the long haul. And right now I'm coming to you from our very tiny guest bedroom. <laughs> we are actually building my studio. and exciting. Well, not during the snow, but yes. we're building my studio. So... Um, I'm compressing. It's hard for me to keep from making messes all over the house right now. You so. know, creativity is messy. It just it is. is very messy. It, it just is. Very is. Messy. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad you could be here. I almost forgot to do our shout outs, um, which we have so many great people watching. So let's make sure we reach out to them. Mm -hmm. um, so we have Vernita from Omaha, Veronica from North Carolina. Um, <laughs> let's see, Sandy from Pennsylvania. Liz, who do you have on your end? I've got Catherine from Southeast Georgia and Anne from South Africa. Oh, wow. And then we've got Linda from Pennsylvania and Mary from Extremely Cold Iowa, all caps. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry, Mary. It's extremely cold here, too. So that's all right. Hopefully everyone can stay safe and warm. And we are super, super excited about this project, but mostly um, this skill that, that Blair has to share with you about um, color theory when you're creating your quilts. So Blair is the creator of the Ruby Ruler, which is this awesome little pink ruler. And Blair and I were talking last week. This is so great because it stands out in your sewing drawer. If you're looking <laughs> for it, you can always find this ruler because it is, it, you know, it's bright pink and easy to find. And I love that. And so Blair, tell us a little bit about why you created this and what it's used for. So I like scrappy quilts and um, a lot of people, a lot of people think, do like scrappy quilts yeah. and we all want to make better scrappy quilts. And so I uh, love playing around with color value in my, on all of my scraps. And uh, a lot of people aren't always sure exactly what that means um, how to, de how to see that in your fabrics. And so the ruler, um, is actually based on something that artists and photographers have used for many years. Um, and it's a way for you to hold in front of your eyes. It's a way for you to look at your composition, your quilt design. A photographer could look at a photograph or at a landscape painting, and it allows you to sort of wipe away, um, the color and look more at the forms that you see in your design, which helps you determine color value. Yeah. So, so it's so a we can, yeah, it's a nifty little tool. It's just a, it's a great design tool. I use it all the time. Well, so, so we let, can show let's that. try it out. Yeah. Yeah. This is what it looks like when you're holding that up. And we're going to use this a couple times today, guys. So ask lots of questions. Yeah. Um, but this. What it does is it, it's canceling out the color so you can see the value, right? right. So the lights and the darks. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, Blair? Like, it's not color wheel, it's color value. Yeah. So, yeah, color, balance, color value can be confusing because um, it has nothing to do with the color wheel. Um, in my world, I don't use the color wheel um, because I, I colors speak to me in different ways than on a color wheel. However, color value... 
really is about the lightness and darkness of any any color or any fabric in our case. Okay. And which which means how it relates to the fabrics around it. So I've got an example. I think Misty has the same fabrics yeah. um, there in the studio. So we'll show you a little example. So I've got this beautiful K facet fabric here. You may look at this and immediately say it's a medium value or it's a dark value just based on maybe how you use your stash and what types of fabrics that you like. You wouldn't be wrong, but you'd have a better answer if you add a friend to it, which is this guy here. Now you can make value determinations. This one is the darker one. Yeah, Misty's there got the go. same one. So now the original fabric's the darker fabric and the one that we just added is the lighter fabric, the lighter value fabric. Yeah. So that's the value relationship between those two. But then you can also change it up a little bit more. And we'll add this one here. So if you add this fabric, now this one's the lighter fabric. That's so interesting. And one, yeah, and the one that we added is the darker fabric. So that's what I mean by the relative lightness or darkness. It's how a fabric plays um, with other fabrics around it. And a lot of times when we, um, students will tell me my quilts feel a little flat mm -hmm. and I'm not sure why, even though it's got a lot of colors in it. And it's probably because um, when you're looking at value differences, you're looking, you're always searching for those really strong value differences when in reality, if you mixed those with some more subtle value differences, that's when you get what I call quilt sparkle. Which is what we which all want, what, right? Yeah, it's what we all want. <laughs> right. And so it, using the ruler, and when you use it, if you hold it halfway, you know, sort of like a foot from your eyes and then in front of your um, <clears throat> design wall or the fabrics on your sewing table, um, or even if you're going into a fabric store and looking at bolts of fabric, you can hold this in front of your eyes and you can pick up on more subtle value differences. Over time, you learn to get really sharp at looking at those. And so when you start changing the way that you view value and putting some more subtle values together in the same block, you start to get the sparkle. So. This is the this is the uh, pattern, the half square triangle around the world pattern, the a Missouri star pattern that I made using all K fabrics, which honestly, I think, I don't know about you, Misty, these all look like dark to me. Well, you and, know, like and that was exactly, they're like medium dark. Like they're very, very yeah. dark. And so when I was talking to Blair about what fabric we were going to use and what to choose, I was like, K will be perfect because not yeah. only are a lot of the prints similar in tone when you're looking at the stack, but also because of some of his big prints, you can get completely different values out of the same yeah. fabric if you cut it up, which um, to me, but, I hadn't even considered until I started talking to you about it. It's really fun. And I've got an example here. This is one of the 10 inch squares um, from Cape Sline that I've cut into wow. just four different squares these all now can be used and this is the same print i've got here i in think different values in different ways you hold your ruby ruler in front of it and like when i hold my ruler in front of my eyes and i'm looking at this this one's definitely a darker value yeah. than this one. so using something like that even if you were to make a half square triangle unit with these very similar values and mix them with some that are stronger value differences, that's your sparkle. That's when you that. get the sparkle. I love yeah. that. And, 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 and I, Charlotte Gray oh, says, um, it, awesome, is that the ruby red five inch ruler she's holding up? I got one of those quite a while ago from Missouri Star. Can I use it for color value? Yes, yes, exactly. That's what we're talking about today. This is the ruby ruler and it is totally for color value. Yeah, and I love that because when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's a cute little pink five inch ruler, you know? And then now that I've talked to you, Blair, to learn um, what an asset it can be to your sewing room um, by being able to look at your designs or like you said keeping it handy in your purse when you're shopping yeah. 
to, to find the, the values that you really need to go with, you know, maybe you have a swatch that you need contrast and you, you want to make sure that you get the right color to go with it, you can bring this with you and use it as a tool, which I just love a tool that has multiple uses. And so multiple to know uses. that it has more use than just cutting some five inch squares is really, really great. So let's, yeah. let's talk about, um, cause you mentioned um, holding that ruler up and, and being able to see how it relates to a quilt. So let's actually look at this quilt behind me here. Um, if we can zoom in on it guys. And I'm gonna have Noah put this up again. And so I, I want you to, I wanna point out here, cause Blair mentioned how um, color value really is how the fabric relates to the fabric it's next to. And so you can see here, this is obviously darker and this is the light. But in this case, this is much darker than this. And so if you had these two fabrics together, this would be the dark. But because it's with this print here, in this case, it's the light. And so by using the Ruby ruler and realizing what the true lights and darks are, you can see how close they are in reality. Um, by, by using that Ruby ruler and finding the true lights and darks, we're able to point out and create this beautiful design um, just by paying attention to color value, which I think is amazing. Yeah, it is. It allows you to take your scraps and um, things that really don't, um, like you don't have to, you could use an entire line from a, a K facet line or a, a line that you like. You could also just use the scraps yeah. in your scrap bin and try this with them and make um, a scrappy patchwork quilt that has forms that you've created because you're paying attention to the value. Yeah. Different. And I think this, this pattern especially lends itself so well to a, a scrap busting project because yes. when you're using the Ruby ruler to, to find those values, you literally can use anything you've got um, and you're going to end up with a beautiful project in the end. Yeah. And yeah. I, I love the freedom in that. The, the yeah. idea of just pulling what you have, not paying attention to it too much when you're sewing it together and yeah. just, using this tool to see how it all ends up. It's true. I always say to my students, like power to the people. Your design is in your hands. Yes. You design your quilts. Yeah. I love um, that. And so I, ha I have a video, um, a, a short video of me uh, laying out this pattern as I was sewing it together. And hopefully you can see in it, I am constantly using once you've made your half square triangles. And I always say that when you're making your units, for a quilt like this or a scrappy quilt, focus on the value differences within that block before you think about the whole um, design. Because if you think about the whole design too early, then you're not gonna get the really cool um, value differences, the one like what Misty pointed out in the quilt behind her. You're not gonna get that because you're gonna start to worry, oh, but that light's lighter than that one. I don't want you to worry about that. So getting a little ahead of yourself that way. Yeah. So okay. I made a big batch of these K facet um, fabrics um, into half square triangles. And then in the video, you can see that as I'm laying it out, I'm constantly looking and evaluating and then I'm moving the, it away and I'm looking at different parts of it and you'll see me move things around. And just as a side note, I only wish that I worked as fast as this video is going to show me working. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? All right, let's roll that. at the end. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, you can see, I mean, you stand back, you look at it because once you made those units and you're putting them up on your design wall, then you can stand back and look um, through this again and make sure, because you want to mix within the quilt, you want to mix some of the, the stronger contrast blocks next to some of the uh, more subtle contrast blocks, because that's really Again, we're all going for like the quilt sparkle. We don't want our quilts to be flat and that's gonna help you 
sort of create this glow in your quilt. Like, I guess it's like a, another form of like sunshine and shadow. Or yeah, something. Sure. absolutely. So yeah. Lynn Ross is asking Blair, hi from Arizona. I have trouble with medium value. Some patterns say dark, medium, dark, medium, light. Can this ruler help me? Um, yes, it can. So the way that I do that, I have, um, I was working on a pattern that had four different values. And, and what I say to do is I always start by taking all my fabrics and dividing them into two values. Okay. Um, and then from there, um, I would take, um, so I would take the light value pile and maybe pull out a couple of the darker ones and then maybe take the, um, the dark value pile and do the same. And then you're kind of creating um, a medium value. And then honestly, from there, I wouldn't probably make another value pile. I would start to design or I would start to piece a block and I would look at the block and say, all right, so if it's saying that that's going to be kind of a lighter dark, I think she said there were four different values that one. And so you want to look at that, just that one block and just make sure that in each position that you've got some contrast between like a medium dark and a dark dark and a light medium and things like that. This again, this is going to help you look at that block, stand back from it and see um, where the values are and they don't all have to be super contrasty to work and you would be surprised. And if you think that one block is not working, I always tell my students, just make more blocks. Yeah. <laughs> because the more blocks you make, following that same idea, the more the, the more you create the message, the more you create the forms, and the more you know you communicate the value that you're seeing. So hopefully that helps. I love that. So, I think that's great advice, yeah. And a couple more questions for you two on, along this line. So one is, why red? Why not blue or green? So red is based because people smarter than I am figured out that red works. Um, and uh, what photographers used to use is actually called, it's referred to as ruby lith film. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> it's a true red that's clear and the red um, will cancel out the colors. Um, there's also, um, I think some greens but i haven't experimented with those but for some reason um the sh the red itself it, it works um for you know like 95 percent of the fabrics that we look through or the shapes it just takes away um all of the color and um just allows you just to see the different forms in what you're looking at which if you were to put the ruler um if you were to look through the ruler at the quilt behind misty you would see um just the darker uh diamond shapes all right so we'll pull that up so we can see okay that. there we go and this also along that side as you're showing the diamond shapes yeah. um can, can you also just... tell us like um how this looks on red or pink fabrics because um, people are saying this is wild Teresa says this is wild can you talk about how that shows up on red fabrics so these are pinks right here yeah and so you can see that it does you kind of lose some of the dimension of that but you can still obviously tell the value the, yeah. the dark and the light yeah even with the, the pinks and the reds oh yeah and you you know you get used to seeing something if if a Sometimes certain colors and fabrics can um, sort of pop out at you differently when you're looking at them um, through the red. That's not necessarily value that you're looking at. So you just train your eye. Yes, it's doing, it's, it's look at that color in that fabric's looking weird, but I'm looking at the value of the two fabrics. So um, that's not really, that's just it. The color looks weird. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. That is fair. The another question that's coming up a little bit is does your does your phone's black and white photo work in a similar way? Yes, it does. Um, I and also squinting works in a similar way, but I I don't encourage us to squint because it's just going to give us wrinkles. So don't <laughs> do that. But um, so the, yes, your phone 
taking a, a photo of your of, of your quilt design and changing it to black and white will work um, to a degree. I find that it doesn't um, always show me those more subtle values the way I would want to see them, but it definitely um, will work, um, you know, to sort of give you a look at that as well. Yeah. And then and one last question before I turn it back over to you guys to, to continue chatting about this, because this tool is very cool. I saw you holding it again several inches from your face. So you're not holding it right up to the fabric and you're not holding it right up to your face. You're using it in, yeah. in between space. That's right. So don't hold it up to your eyes like this and don't hold it, like don't lay it down on the fabric like that. You always, it's really just a viewfinder. So you want to look at it as um, I'm looking through it at what's beyond me, you know, I'm holding it about a foot away from my eyes. And the same if you were to go into a fabric store or if you were to even look at a lot of times when I've got a lot of different fabrics on my work table that I want to try to use, I'll just hold it maybe a tiny bit closer, but never, you know, never right on the fabric and never right at your eyes. Well, and kind of I was so glad that you pointed that out when we were talking before, because when I first was playing with it, I immediately, my reaction was to take my half square triangles and just set it right on top of it. Right. And I'm like, well, I guess that works. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it, I didn't see the, the actual usefulness of it as much until I heard from you. No, it's, it's like you said, a viewfinder. You're looking through it. And when you pull it back, like you said, and I'm looking through the ruler at this half square triangle, you know, on my cutting table, all of a sudden it, it completely changes how it looks. And, and yeah. so I think that's a really important tip because I had no idea that that yeah. was the proper way to use it until you told me. So yeah. I was grateful exactly. for that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what's really cool is that you can take your, you know, if you want to play around with this idea, you can take a bunch of scraps you can make half, or half square triangles. You can, you know, use the, this pattern here is a great place to start. And then um, you, when you square them up, I use this to square them up. Um, if they need, you know, like their little tails or ears cut off. Yeah. And then as I'm squaring them up, I can lift it, decide which one's darker and lighter and, you know, lay it. I usually make a stack of half square triangles with the dark all on one side. Just, I was going to ask if you did that, if you kind of just yeah. made a pile of what you decided was the light in the dark. Yes. And you yeah. do. But sometimes you don't really know if, if your, if your value differences are very subtle, sometimes you really don't know a hundred percent until you put it in your quilt design. Yeah. yeah. So, and sometimes, you know, the thing to think about is, um, like, for example, I'm sure you guys can see the orange printed fabric, like that right there. Yes. It, it's got, like, it's a blue ground with oranges printed on I it. I have any of those ones. I have a very similar one, but, yeah, it's so cute. Yeah, it's that. It's So in this particular quilt, I've used it three times. Two times it is the darker value, and one time it is the lighter value. I love that. Wild. Yeah, so... Here. Same fabric. Now it's the lighter value here, if you can see that. Yes. Here it's the darker. And then over on that one, it's the darker. Yeah. So sometimes you just have to lay it out to really see um, what the value is going to do. I love you that. Know? And, and so, so fascinating. And it is a yeah. ruler too, like you said. So it's a five inch ruler with all the markings and you can use it to square up your half square triangles as you go, as you said too. So folks are asking, is it just a ruby square? Nope, it's also yep. a ruler. Yep, it has all the markings in here. We can show you yes. here if we want to get a close up here. So and you can see it's got the one to five and all your halves and quarters um, and eighths in there. And then you also have that diagonal, that 45 line. Yep. So one other question we've got is, can you show us an example of what you would change in a square quilt? Janet Lopez wants to know. 
Oh, that's a great question. So could we maybe lay out well, some of the half square triangles yeah. and then start yeah. switching them around? Could you hear? This? I don't know if Blair could hear that. I one. could. I could catch the whole question. So okay. she she said, um, could you show maybe something that you would change in a square or a quilt? So I'm just gonna I'm gonna lay a few of these out. And can can you see the table, Blair? If I lay these out here, I think so. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just gonna guess, and then maybe you can use your expertise and and come in and change it up. Okay. Okay. And so what Misty is organizing here on the back um, behind us is the half square triangles around the world quilt. And there is a tutorial on this quilt. And so we're laying out half square triangles in kind of diamond shapes where the darks and the lights come together to form larger diamonds. So this is actually a bunch of different cave collections. You can use scraps, you can use a whole collection, whatever your heart desires. But what we love about the cave fabrics is that because they are so um, brightly colored with so many colors that one 10 inch square can be cut up into maybe three or four different values by the time you actually put them together. So we're gonna use the Ruby ruler to determine if we wanna change any of these pieces around. All right. I'm pretty stoked. I don't have any idea if I'm doing <laughs> this right, but we're just going with it. It looks great. It. We're just going with it. Yeah. Okay. You're not working quite as fast as I did in that video. I know, <laughs> I know. I need, I need your speed boost for sure. <laughs> and then to help the folks at home, I'm, I'm gonna ask Noah to put that Ruby Vision over so we can see. See one more time. Ooh, see this one's tricky. So I don't know which peek. one's the light or the dark here. Ooh. That one's really tricky. Ooh. All right, Blair, you're gonna have to tell me on that one. Or we're gonna use the Ruby ruler and decide. Yeah, use the ruler. I can't quite see it, but I bet you could figure it out. I think it's this way. Okay. So then when you come across a one like that that has really subtle differences and you make a call, then, you know, what I would do normally yeah. is make sure that whatever is around it sort of um, has, maybe I would make a, a, put a block with a little more contrast Next beside of that it. one. Okay, just yeah, so to sort maybe, of inform that one. So then this one would maybe need to move so that it gives it a little more yeah. contrast. So then maybe this guy. That is so fascinating. All right, can, yeah. you, can you guys see that? Oh yeah, Noah's got it. So this one, you see how close this is, guys? It is really, really close. Because we have this large scale print here, um, in real life, this is, is a lot of green, and the back and the majority of this print here is also green. And so yeah. it just really reads so, so close in color. And those blocks are important. Those, yeah. those, those uh, subtle blocks are important. And I will let everybody know that you will not get arrested if you change your mind about the value. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's your call. Exactly, yes. yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that is so... So cool. So we have folks saying, what happens when you have too many medium values? So talk to us about that a little bit. Like, I know you said if you make one and it's subtle, make more of them and, and look at how you're putting those together. Can you give us a little more advice about that too? She said if there's too many medium values? Yes. Yeah. How to, yes. How to work with that. There's always value differences in, the med in between your, your medium values. So what you should do is... Um, don't, you know, still think about it block by block. And a lot of times um, people feel compelled to, like if you're going to make a whole stack of those medium values into half square triangle blocks, a lot of people um, get very stuck in how they pair those fabrics together and making sure there's good contrast. And what I would suggest in a case like that is to take your medium blocks or your medium squares, put them in a paper bag, so that you are pulling blindly oh, interesting. two at a time. The only rule is you can't put you you can't put any back unless you pull out two of the same. Um, and I like make that your challenge. half square triangle blocks. I do like that challenge. That's really fun. Yeah, and because then what happens is you start to realize 
that there is more value differences between certain fabrics in that stack that you hadn't thought of before. And what it also does is it pairs uh, fabrics that you would have probably never thought to pair together. Sure. And it's a great way to just play with value um, in a design and just letting it happen and looking at the results later on. So you make your, you pull out from your bag, you make your units, then you put them back in the bag and you put some music on so that you're just, you know, totally in your zone. And then you lay out this design as you go and just see what happens. I love that. Yeah. I wish you would have given me that, uh, that <laughs> hint before, because I'll be honest, the control freak in me, when I, when I started to make these half square triangles, wanted to like go through and pre-sort everything before I yeah. sewed. And I was like, yeah. Blair said not to do that. <laughs> she, yes. I remembered you said that. And so I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try my best to just pull from the pile and work yeah. whatever I end up with. And so I did, I think I did pretty good, but, but there were a few times when I was like, Oh, I don't know. I don't yeah. know if I can sew those two together. And I just tried yeah. to try to power through like this one actually was a, a very challenging one, which is funny because now that it's yeah. cut up, they look so different. But when it was the larger <laughs> prints, yeah. I really, really struggled with actually sewing it together, which is funny because yeah. now it worked great. But, yeah. <laughs> you know. And, you know, these quilts, when, they, when they've got that glow, you know, it's so funny. I probably have 100 quilts in this house. This is the warmest house in Santa Fe. <laughs> and the quilt that everybody loves the most um, is the probably my first value-based test um, using this ruler because it's just the kitchen sink. Yeah. Everything is in it. And it almost turns into like an I spy quilt. Yeah. You're like, oh, you know, where did that fabric come from? Yeah. I, I agree. Um, Jenny has shared a story before of when we first opened the shop here in Hamilton, um, we used to make quilts to sell, which we don't do anymore. But when we had just the one little shop, we used to make quilts to sell. And the ones that always sold the fastest were the scrappy, like, really? simple. Yes. And I think we've, we've talked a lot about it. And I think it's because people aren't afraid to use them and love them. You know, it's something know. about, like, this looks like what my grandma made. Um, and they're willing to snuggle up with them and actually use them, which I think is, um, is a really interesting thought. And I love scrappy quilts for that same reason. They feel cozy and warm. And I, I want to use them. Well, and you know, I didn't grow up with quilt makers. So the thought of like buying a huge piece of fabric and cutting it down into little <laughs> tiny pieces and then sewing it back together, I didn't, I, that was foreign to me. I thought all quilts were scrappy. Yeah. I thought you made a quilt out of, you know, just what you had. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah. I love that. And I love that we can make do and we can use tools like this to not only make do, but create beautiful quilts. Um, yes with what we have, which is yeah. a, a really great sentiment. I love that. It is. And, and Dana um, also says, I've gotten fabric and was told it was ugly until they've seen the finished project. Yeah. And this I, is actually a really fun way to play with this is to get out the fabric that maybe you don't love anymore, cut it up and look at it and suddenly you fall in love with it again. Yeah. It's a pretty cool process. It really yeah, is. Yeah. Challenge everybody to get out all your ugly fabric and make a value quilt out of it. I love that. And then share <laughs> it with us because we want to we see it. That's right. Yes. Share it with us. And you can use hashtag MSQC show and tell to share any of your projects with us. We'd love to see what you do with these. We'd love to see you using your Ruby ruler and show us how you're making quilts and making your, your values work for you. Yes, absolutely. And um, I don't know, do we have any more questions we want to take before we wrap up here, Liz? There's just one more question that's been okay. asked a couple times about lighting. So, Blair, when you're using this, does lighting matter as far as, like, do you have need bright light to, to use this ruler most effectively, that kind of thing? No, I've never, I've never really played with lighting with it. I don't think that's a real factor. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Well, awesome. Blair, thank you so much for being here, for making this work through all of the technical difficulties we've had along the way. <laughs> you have been a total trooper, and I'm so grateful that we got to connect, you know, even through a pan pandemic. It's pretty awesome. I know. Technology's pretty yes. awesome. So thank you so thank much for you. being here. You guys, make sure you check Blair out. She's on Instagram, and, uh, uh, you know, she's got a great newsletter out there as well. So What's your handle on Instagram, Blair? You want to share? It's some Blair of S. Blair S. Okay. Yes. And anywhere else people can follow you, you want to share with 
So mm -hmm. I have a private Facebook group um, that is called Wisecraft Quilts, and we d have been doing some sew-alongs and things in there. So yeah, feel free to join that and Very fun. share how you use your ruler. We'd love to see it. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. I hope we can circle up and have you join us again and have a wonderful day, everybody. We will see you next time.